Uh... This is the average person losing their sanity after trying to understand what Lemnus Gate is. The Lemnus Gate Motor Force can be an extremely daunting and confusing series to get into, and the lore is extremely spread out across obscure media. In this video, I'm going to attempt to explain what Lemnus Gate is, how the timeline functions, and the best ways to get into the series. Lemniscape Games is an organization that I created in which we create media, mostly video games and sometimes books, but are all part of one connected multiverse, known as the Lemniscape Multiverse. A lot of this media can be downloaded for free at infinityjka.itch.io. Why, you may ask? Because I'm bored. With the Lemniscape Multiverse, there are three main sub -seasons. The Neville Prophecy, the Tale of the Infinity Realm, and Bipple. Now, what are the differences between these series? To explain that, I'll need to first briefly talk about the timeline. Basically, in 2300 AD, something called the Finnis event occurs, which causes the Nextors, which are basically gods of the base realm, where humanity is, to reform the Earth. Now, there are two main things that they consider to do with the reformation. One, they change the location of Earth's continents, give humans the power to use magic, and create new humanoid races to balance out humanity's control of the Earth. Two, the next Earth raise Earth's land above the clouds and forbid the manipulation of electricity, turning Earth into what's called the Azure Heavens. Bible and Neville Prophecy covers what happens in the timeline where the next Earth shows the fourth plan, while the Tale of the Infinity Realm covers what happens if they chose the second plan. Don't think that the timelines are completely disconnected though, there are many characters who have powers or technology that allows them to travel between, create, and or connect to different timelines. As for the difference between the Neville Prophecy and Bible, which both take place in the same timelines, the Neville Prophecy is much more lighthearted and comedic, and takes place mostly on the continent of Nolavilia, while the Bible subseries is much more serious and dark, and takes place mainly on the neighboring continent of Bible. There's also the Retro Bibble timeline, in which the four 17 Bibble games, apart from 15, take place in. This is an alternate timeline version of the canon Bibble timeline, but the old Bibble games are really bad, and the Retro lore is almost completely disconnected from the rest of the timelines, so there's not really a need to get into it just to understand the rest of the lore. All of this talk about timelines might be a bit confusing, so I'll quickly explain how timelines function in the multiverse. Basically, there is an infinite amount of PUs, parallel universes, that exist in any given timeline. In the third dimension, time moves consistently forwards, but never backwards. This is because moving backwards would change history and not allow for the future to occur. However, what if you did try to move backwards in time? This would create an AU, or alternate universe. When a new AU is created, a new timeline starts to run parallel to the original universe that it was created from. Take a look at this. The timeline is moving forwards in time, and it is year 2000. Now, an AU taking place in year 1800 of the original universe is created. Even though it is currently year 2000 in the original universe, the AU is running parallel in year 1800 of the original universe and all events prior to year 1800 of the AU were identical to the events taking place up until year 1800 of the original universe. But where did this AU come from, you may be wondering. The answer is simple, a PU was converted into an AU. Remember that at any universe at any given time, there was an infinite amount of PUs corresponding to that moment. Specifically, there was actually infinity to the infinity of power of PUs corresponding to a universe at any moment. This is because there's also an infinite amount of potential AUs that could be created at any moment. Theoretically, say that something somehow opened up an infinite amount of PUs during a single moment. With an infinite amount of PUs converted at once, this would mean that there is now an infinite amount of AUs created as such. This would mean that there is now an infinite amount of potential AUs created for each open PU, specifically an infinite amount of PUs. This would mean that there would now be infinity to the infinity of power of AUs that could potentially be created. However, wouldn't this mean that there could be a higher power of infinity that could exist in the moment, since the new potential AUs could be converted to PUs? No, it wouldn't. 
Keep in mind that the PUs only become AUs when the timeline diverts, and since this is all happening in a singular moment of time, there were no diversions in the opened PUs until a minimal amount of time, the smallest positive number that's above zero amount of time, passes. So until another moment passes, the PUs are still AUs. Due to this, by the time that the PUs become AUs, there is no longer infinity to the infinite power, just a new infinity relative to the amount of infinite PUs available at the new moment and not at the previous moment. Basically, what I'm saying is that I don't know how time works, but I needed a way for time to work in order to afford all my stories and world building, so I thought of this when I couldn't go to sleep at 2am. So please don't take this as how time actually works, because it probably isn't. Now, here's a list of all luminous gate media. But don't be worried, some of these don't exist. Kind of. Due to cancellations and such, many of these games don't exist within the real world, but exist within the canon to fall for the lore. The easiest way to explain these would be like imaginary numbers and math. The games don't actually exist, but can be used when calculating the canon of a timeline. Taking away all the imaginary games, this is what we get. Hopefully, that looks slightly less intimidating now. But where do I even start? I know you're definitely totally wondering, and of course, that would be a very good theoretical question. Going to infinityjke.h.io and installing Ripple might be a good start. However, almost all of the games are chronologically out of canonical order, and there are lots of games that are part of separate canons, so I'll give a quick explanation of each game, book, and show how good it is as a starting point in the Lemnus Gate Multiverse. Ripple Empires is the fourth game in the Ripple series, and it's a multiplayer SRPG powered by Google Docs. There's one big problem, however. The game has shut down. Luckily, you weren't missing out on much lore, since the game is actually part of the retro timeline, and the only part that you need to know about the lore is that there's a boat called the Tractor. Not to be confused with Bipple 15 Battle Simple, Bipple 2 Battle Simple is a multiplayer PvP torn based RPG also running on Google Docs. Similar to Bipple Empires, this game has shut down and is no longer playable. The only thing you need to know about the lore is that there's a Razian guy named Allswaz. Bipple 5 is when the Bipple games actually start to become games, though I wouldn't really say that they're the best. Bipple 5 is the start of a series of Bipple games released exclusively on the Microsoft Microbit. These games are really bad and don't even have lore inside of the actual game. While there is technically an overcomplicated plot, none of it is relevant to the overworking Lemon Escape plot. I would definitely not recommend starting off with Bipple 5 Saga. This game was cancelled, but there was a very early prototype that exists, so I'm including it here. Ripple 6 was supposed to be an open world game similar to Adventure on the Atari. However, there's one small problem. It's on the Microsoft Microbit. In case you're curious how this works, I'm just going to do a full playthrough of the game right now. Yep, that's the entire game. Two rooms. You've basically just experienced everything you can in the game, so there's no need to play it. Similar to Ripple 5, there is some extremely overcomplicated lore about the game, but of course, none of it's in the actual game, and none of it is relevant to the overworking plot. This game only exists as an early prototype, and it is also on the Microsoft Microbit. It's also really bad. Starting to see a pattern yet? Again, there's technically some lore about it, but none of it's in the actual game, and none of it is actually relevant. I do not recommend playing this game. I'm just including the rest of the Microbit games here at once. The code for both of these games are lost, 
though they were technically completed at one point. Ripple 11 is a clickle game similar to something like Clickle Oats and Never Love Us, which we'll get to later. Ripple 12 is a PvP game where two players would move across one side of the screen, shooting projectiles while trying to avoid the opponent. There is also a planned port of Ripple 12, called Ripple 14, Sniper Duel, that was planned to release on the PNAF Watch, which is a non-limited speed program that was also on the Microsoft Microbit. Ripple 14 was planned to allow for wireless multiplayer, a feature that was not in Ripple 12. These games do have some complex lore of course, but none of it is obviously inside of the actual game, nor does it have any lasting plot relevance. Again, I would not recommend starting or even playing these games. Yes, we're finally here! Bibble 15 is where the series really begins. Bibble 15 is a semi-open world turn-based RPG that is the first Bibble game to take place in the modern timeline. See, look, it's right here in the timeline. Although the game isn't the best, it's a decent introduction to the Bibble series and can run on basically any modern Windows PC. Bibble 15 is the first game to establish the continent of Bibble, as well as the territories of Bibble. And while I do think that Bibble 4, Liberation of Zero, does a better job in developing the politics of each territory, you can actually explore the various territories in Bibble 15 and visit the towns. Hey look! Ruins. I sure hope nothing bad happened there in the prequel. Overall, I would argue that this is one of the better games to start off with, though there are a few other games and books that I will be talking about later that you may want to consider instead. This was a physical board game that I made. I don't have the original board game anymore, but it's technically playable if you use a spreadsheet to emulate it. There's honestly not really much point in playing this, as it's one of the only Bebel games to have literally no plot, both inside and outside of the game. At least the microbit games have lore outside of the game, though I'd say that Bebel 16 is infinitely more enjoyable than any of the microbit games. Yes, this is the only game that doesn't use Roman numerals for some reason. Ripple 17 is a multiplayer SRPG powered by Google Sheets with gameplay divided from Ripple Empires. It expands on many mechanics with things such as automation. The game is now inactive and is no longer played, like Ripple Empires. Also, there is nothing to note about the lore of this game apart from the return of Tractor from Ripple Empires. The game is also not canon in the modern Ripple timeline and it's the last game to be part of the Retro Bibble timeline. Bibble 18 is horrible. There is literally nothing more to say about it. It is a mini-game included in Neville OS, so you'll probably play it if you're trying to complete Neville OS, but I would not recommend going out of your way to play it. Easily the worst model era Bibble game. Similar to Bibble 18, Bibble 19 is included as a minigame in Neville OS. Unlike Bibble 18, however, Bibble 19 is actually enjoyable. Though the game is extremely short with only 3 levels, it has a fair amount of replay value with its different stat upgrades and builds that you can do. The game also features Quest as the protagonist, and shows what he's doing years after the ending of Bibble 4 Liberation of Zero, though this game was made almost 2 years before Liberation of Zero. Overall, Bibble 19 is one of the highlights of Neville OS and is definitely worth playing if you're a fan of the Bibble series. On its own, however, it's a simple and short game that's more of a puzzle than an RPG and probably won't give you more than 20 minutes of gameplay with sub 40 second speedruns of the game being possible. And due to this, I find it difficult to recommend this as the first game you should play. Bibble 20, Neville Battle Simple, is a multiplayer PvP RPG featuring characters throughout the Bibble series, Neville Prophecy series, and even the Tale of the Infinity Realm series. It is a player vs player RPG, fully automated, and is coded entirely on Google Sheets. Notable characters include Oswald from Bibble 2, Advent from Bibble 15, Computer Neville from Cyber Safety, No Loud from Neville Fighters, and Infinity from the Tale of the Infinity Realm. This is also the final Bibble game to be coded using Google services such as Google Docs and Google Sheets. It has many new features compared to Bibble 2, the last PvP RPG, 
such as fully automated combat calculations and over 30 playable characters. While the spreadsheet is still up and is still functional, the game is no longer being actively played and is basically shut down. As well as this, the game isn't canon and barely contains any lore. As fun as the game might be for long-term fans of the Lemnus Gate series, its difficult accessibility and reliance on pre-existing lore makes it a bad game to stop the series with. Ripple 21, despite being publicly released, is one of the most obscure games in the series. It's the final game in the original Bibble Numeric series, as the next game reboots the name as Bibble 2. The game is an interactive fiction in which the player can choose the actions that Protag, the protagonist, takes during his investigation of the Nation of Rogue. However, this game was exclusively released for the Vex robot and has an extremely complicated control setup. The player must have two pieces of paper, one that is bright red and one that is bright blue, and use them as inputs in front of a connected camera to perform sort of actions. As well as this, the game assumes the player already knows the locations of the Bibble timeline, and casually mentions locations such as the Nation of Rogue or the Nation of Isle without any explanation. Due to these reasons, I would highly advise against playing this as your first Bibble game, even if you somehow have access to a Vex robot to play them. Bipple 2 Investigations is the 22nd game in the Bipple series. Starting with this game, the series' number was moved back to 2. This was done since the first 14 games aren't even part of the main lore, and a lot of the games were extremely low quality, and or didn't even exist. As for what the game actually is, Bipple 2 Investigations is a PC remake of Bipple 21 Trials, and is planned to have customizable player-generated levels using a custom coding system called Protag Code. The game has a walking early build, though development of the game has been temporarily postponed in order to finish Conspiracy of the Mechanical Nation and Liberation of Missouri Force. Once the game actually releases though, I still wouldn't recommend starting with it. Just like Bibble 21, Bibble 2 Investigations assumes that the player already knows the basic geography of the Bibble continent, and the game is also taking place directly after Bibble 3, Conspiracy of the Mechanical Entity, and Bibble 15, Battle Simple. Bipple 3, Conspiracy of the Mechanical Entity, is the 23rd game in the Bipple series and is planned to be released later this year. The game is a text-based, turn-based RPG with permadeath, different skills, and stats to unlock, with an in-game economy and stock market, and it takes place at around the same time in the timeline as Bipple 15, Battle Simple. Though the game talks about a lot of different locations on the Bipple continent, the introduction of the game provides an explanation for some of the locations which will help new players understand the events. As well as this, Bibble 3 is text-based and should run on any PC that has Python. A demo for Bibble 3 will be released in mid-May of this year. It might be out right now, so make sure to check infinityjka.itch.io to see if it's out yet. Due to this, Bibble 3, Conspiracy of the Mechanical Entity, is a good starting point for getting into the Bibble series once it releases. Bibble 4 Liberation Azuril is the 24th game in the Bibble series and is planned to release later this month in May. The game is a single player SRPG with permadeath, over 50 playable characters, branching story paths, and multiple endings. The game, while talking about many concepts of the Limitless Gate Multiforce, has a story that can be enjoyed on its own and provides a good introduction to many of the locations on the Bibble continent, though it's not as good as actually exploring them in Bibble 15. The game also has a lot of replay value, with there being many unique events that can occur on each playthrough, and the story can drastically change depending on your actions, both in and outside of battle. In terms of the canon, it is also currently the oldest canonical game in the Bibble timeline, with it taking place hundreds of years before other games, such as Bibble 15, Bibble 19, and Bibble 21. Playing the game can also help you get into the rest of the series, as Bibble 19 and Hand of the Nephil Prophecy, both feature characters from Bibble 4 after the events of the game. Due to these reasons, I would say that Bibble 4 Liberation of Zuriel is one of the best starting points for getting into the Limitless Gate Multiverse and will be available to download at infinityjka.edge.io hopefully later this month. Now that we are finally done talking about all of the Bibble games, it's time to move on to the Neville Prophecy game.
Zero Quest is a torn based RPG similar to Bibble 15 that was made before even the original Bibble timeline was established. Due to this, essentially everything from the game is not canon, and the only important thing to remain canon is the creation of the four Zeroes by using the true Zero. Due to this game not being canon, I would barely even consider it part of the 11 Escape Multiverse, and would definitely not recommend starting with Zero Quest. Lemnus Skate TCG Online, originally known as Joel's Quest Online and Devil Courts Online, isn't officially a Lemnus Skate game, but I'm including it here since it has involvement from Lemnus Skate members. Basically, think of it as an unofficial fan game that was also made by the developers. The game is an online trading card game with online multiplayer, and it features characters from across the Lemnus Skate series and a few that are completely just random. However, since it isn't officially even a Lemnus Skate game, and since you'll need to understand the Lemon Escape lore to know who the characters are, I wouldn't recommend playing this game as your first Lemon Escape game. If you have already gotten into the lore though, I would recommend checking out the game. It's easily playable on any desktop browser at this link. Neville Fighters is a 2D fighting game similar to fighting games such as Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat, combined with complex mechanics like Nosing and Guilty Gear or Heritage for the Future, combined with the action of games like Marvel vs. Capcom and Smash Melee. It truly is the pinnacle of gaming, and easily is one of the best, if not the best, Lemon Escape game. Neville Fighters currently has 17 different iconic playable characters from across the Neville Prophecy series, such as Porsche. Blue Zero Red Zero Morel unique movesets and playstyles, and the game is surprisingly balanced and fun to play. Though I highly recommend playing this game, it has no plot whatsoever, and I would recommend reading the hand of the Neville Prophecy before playing this to understand who Enlab, Neville Prime, and Neville ZX are, though it's not crucial to enjoying the game. As for the other characters who are from other Neville Prophecy media, Orange Zero and True Zero are from Zero Quest, Hoodie Nolan is from Nolan Short, and Physics Test Ball is from Neville OS. Again, it is not necessary to know who these characters are in order to play the game, as the rest of the roster force appeared in this game and the fact that there is no plot, 
but knowing who some of the characters are can help enhance your game experience. Overall, I highly recommend playing Level Vitals, and it is available on infinityjka.h.io, where you can download it for free on Windows. Level OS is more than just a game, it is an experience. An experience of pain and cringe. Level OS is a collection of different mini-games presented as an OS. You must harvest oats and clickle oats, test gravity in the physics test, calculate numbers in Bibble Numeral, and save a town in Bibble Quest. The game also includes two short works of literature, Homo Neville and The Man Who Survived the Oat. Though it might not seem like it at first, this game has some extremely in-depth lore. You see this game called Physics Test? In this game, you can reverse gravity and watch as the orbs move across the screen. How could this possibly have deep lore? You may be wondering. Well, the answer is that the events that are transpiring here were actually a symbolic representation of the attack against Neville on Omega by the Nexus Council of Synthesis, who created the Destroyer, aka Physics Test Ball, who is being controlled by a previous one named Conduct, who is you, the player, after deciding that the threat of Dimensionals surpassed the Nexus Law of Intervention, and the Physics Test Ball was designed in hopes of defeating Neville on Omega, a powerful Dimensional Entity from the Shadow Realm in year 1115 AN of the modern Bibble timeline. Of course, you wouldn't know this if you weren't already extremely into the Lemon Escape lore, but the games have surprisingly deep things such as this that hardcore fans of the series could appreciate. Also, I would like to mention that Physics Test Ball is a fully playable character in the Nethel Fighters, available at infinityjka.edge.io. However, as glorious as this game may seem, I would sadly not recommend it as your first Lemon Escape game. Neville OS on its own has no comprehensive story and acts more supplementary material to the rest of the Lemon Escape multiverse. If you play Neville OS with no knowledge of the rest of the series, you will be surely disappointed and confused. If you played after playing the other games, however, you will find an entertaining distraction that expands on some small details and world building of the other games. The Night is Assault on Suzuki Castle, the game, is a randomly generated visual novel resource management city building survival tactics game. It is available on Android devices with a free download at affinityjka.edge.io. The game isn't directly related to any other game or book, but takes place before the Hand of the Neville Prophecy in the timeline, and shows what happened prior to the destruction of Suzuki Castle and Sazogia. Due to its strange plot relevance and mediocre gameplay, I would not recommend this as a game to start with. Vengeful Odes is a play adaptation of The Man Who Survived the Ode and Poem on Neville, the two writings found in Neville OS. As of making this video, Vengeful Oats is currently the canonical adaptation of the story and is much more interesting than the two originals. However, Vengeful Oats has little to no plot relevance in the grand scheme of the Lemniske lore apart from world building where kind of events happen in the nation of Alexande and the story itself isn't really that compelling. Due to this, I would not recommend starting with Vengeful Oats. Stay Healthy is a health PSA that uses actual photos filtered to create a comic-like story. However, Stay Healthy has little plot relevance or plot at all. The entire PSA is only a few pages and there is next to no plot. That doesn't mean that there is a lore, of course. He was a character named Health Brain Neville. This one panel is the only time he ever appears in the series and he has his own wiki page. Also, if you want to help edit the wiki and record the Lemniscate lore, you can do so at lemniscate.fandom.com. Though we have finished pages for most of the Neville Prophecy lore, our Bipple and Infinity Realm pages are mostly incomplete or non-existent, so hope would be much appreciated. Overall, Stay Healthy doesn't really do anything, it isn't interesting, nor does it have any major plot relevance, and I would not recommend this as your first book. Cyber Safety and Scam Dating is another PSA similar to Stay Healthy. However, unlike Stay Healthy, the book is much longer and has much more plot relevance. The book introduces the characters, Computer Neville, and Health Alpha, adds to the world building of what happens in Suzuki Castle, 
and Volvo expands on health level beyond his appearance and stay healthy. However, I would still not recommend this as your introduction to the series as it expands on the world more than it establishes and requires some knowledge of things such as Suzuki Castle and Neville Prime to fully enjoy. I'm just gonna be honest, I have no idea whether this book is even canon or not. The story is extremely fast paced and has basically no connection to or impact with the rest of the series outside of the appearance of DM Breezy at the end of the story. So until something else in the Lemon Skin Multiverse actually directly connects with this, I'm just going to consider it not to be canon. I highly advise against starting with this, as it has little to do with the rest of the multiverse and the plot is extremely difficult to decipher, even when compared to the rest of the series. The Hand of the Neville Prophecy is a poorly drawn comic that shows what happens following the destruction of Sausage Shear and Suzuki Castle. The book is a forced appearance of Geom energy, Alge forms, and tractor users in the series, and features many characters who would later appear in Neville fighters, such as Neville ZX, Enloud, Porson, Double Helix, and Neville Prime. While I don't personally find the story that compelling, and the old work is really horrible, The Hand of the Neville Prophecy is a decent starting point for getting into the Neville Prophecy part of the series, as it contains many of the important characters and systems found in the subseries. However, I would still say that Bipple 4, Liberation of Zuyo, Bipple 15, Battle Simple, and the Tale of the Infinity Realm, Expedition were all better introductions to the series. Finally, it's time to talk about the Infinity Realm part of the series. The Tale of the Infinity Realm, Expedition, is the fourth book in the Infinity Realm sub-series. Unlike the rest of the Infinity Realm series, Expedition is a light-hearted fantasy adventure, detailing the stories of a kid named Infinity as he tries to master all those elemental spells. Despite its much less serious tone compared to the rest of the series, I believe that Infinity Realm Expedition is the best book to get into the sub-series and is one of the best ways to get into the Lemon Skin series as a whole. The Tale of the Infinity Realm 2 Termination is a direct sequel to the Tale of the Infinity Realm Expedition. Termination, while being much shorter than Expedition, tells a much more serious and interesting story of a civilization trying to survive in a post-apocalyptic world. Though I wouldn't recommend starting with Termination over Expedition, as Expedition's writing is very poor compared to the rest of the series, the book heavily relies on Expedition with it being a direct sequel, and I sadly cannot recommend starting with Termination though it is definitely worth reading Expedition just to read Termination and Conquest, even if you didn't enjoy Expedition. The Tale of Infinity Realm 3, Conquest, is the third book in the Infinity Realm trilogy and it is a direct sequel to Termination, with there being little exposition and it directly continues off from Termination's ending. Conquest is easily the most mature book in the Infinity Realm series so far, with it being a story about a battle against an underground organization trying to overthrow the government and control society, with there being many dark themes such as death, a severe contrast from Expedition's friendly adventure of a kid learning magic. And as much as I would like to recommend sorting here, the story relies heavily on the previous two books, and you would not be able to fully enjoy the story without the knowledge of the events of Expedition and Termination. However, similar to Termination, it is definitely worth reading Expedition and Termination just to read Conquest as the series gets significantly better the further you go on. So, in conclusion, I believe that the best ways to get started with the series are either with Bipple 4, Liberation of Zuyo, or the Tale of the Infinity Realm, Expedition. However, I also think that Bipple 3, Conspiracy of the Mechanical Entity, Bipple 15, Battle Simple, the Hand of the Neville Prophecy and the Neville Fighters were also decent starting points if you feel particularly interested in them. If you're wondering where to experience these games or books, most of them are available at infinityjka.itch.io. If anyone is interested in playing the games or books that aren't on my itch page, I can upload them to it, though I don't think anyone would want to play any of the games or books I haven't uploaded. Anyways, that would be it for this video. Remember kids, go to infinityjka.itch.io and install Bipple.